Nikki, darling, that's not it. It isn't, Nora? No, it goes like this. Thirty-three fine brews blended into one great beer. Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer presents The New Adventures of the Thin Man with Nick and Nora Charles, the happiest, merriest married couple in radio. Tuesday night at this same time, that international favorite, Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer, proudly presents the finest in summertime entertainment. So sit back, relax, and pour yourself a tall, foaming glass full of blended, splendid Pabst Blue Ribbon. While you listen to the stars of our show, Claudia Morgan as Nora and Les Tremaine as Nick, in tonight's adventure of The Thin Man, entitled The Adventure of the Passionate Palooka. <laughs> It's one o'clock in the morning of one of those sizzling July nights that make the average New Yorker feel like a hot dog on a griddle with mustard. We find our hero, Nick Charles, tossing restlessly in his bed and mumbling to himself. Uh, I wonder if I ought to get in order to hit me on the head with one of my old blackjacks. Oh, no, she'd enjoy that too much. Oh, you nuts. Of course, Nora is twitching away in her bed, too. And when she notices that Nick's managed to close his eyes and doze off, she mumbles sweetly to herself. He can't do that to me, the big goon. What right has he got to sleep in a night like this and leave me alone in my misery? And so, with genuine wifely devotion, she gently wakes Nick up. Nick! There's a fire! Hmm? You, what'd you say? Fire? Yes, a fire! Uh, how? When? Where? On my sheets, uh, and I'm cooking. Were you asleep? Yes. I thought so. Is that why you woke me? Well, you had no right to do it without telling me how. Do what? Fall asleep. Well, dear, I, I thought of hundreds of people diving into swimming pools. Female people. <laughs> Why, yes. They, they were all beautiful. They all looked like you. Oh, nice. Maybe I'll think of hundreds of you jumping into a pool. Well, that's a great idea. Makes me feel cooler already. You're making your first leap. You're diving. I look like a swan, huh? You land flat on your tummy. Hey, you must be thinking of someone else, Nora. I never dive like that. Now you're under the water. Uh, what stroke am I doing? You've disappeared. Yeah, hey, wait a minute. Uh, don't I come up? No, I can't see you. Well, Nora, get me out of here. I'm drowning. <laughs> I'm diving in after you. The crowds are applauding. Yeah, hurry, will you? I'm fishing around for you. I'm over here. I've got you. Yeah. Hey, let go. You're pulling my hair. Keep quiet. I'm rescuing you. Nora, baby, you're being carried away. You're uh, pulling me out of bed by the hair. That's the way you rescue people, you ghoul. But I haven't got that much hair left. Cut it out. Let me drag you to the shore first. I'm on the floor, Nora, dear. Or is it the shore? It's the shore. Everyone is pinning medals on me and saying, what did she ever want to rescue him for? Oh, nuts. Now you've just about ruined all my chances of ever falling asleep. That's a fine thing to say to a wife who just saved your life. Who wants to sleep tonight anyway? What do you think we should do? Let's go out. Go out? Mm -hmm. At this hour? Nora, do you want me to become the kind of a bum I used to be? Mm-hmm. Just for tonight. <laughs> okay, baby. Nick the Dick prowls again. Nick, aren't you glad we came out? Look, the whole town's up. Yeah. And look what we're walking into, a band of serenaders. <laughs> You and your girl like to find a way to forget the heat? We certainly would, Mr. Uh, Bud. Then join the Gutter Glee Club for unmusical verses. Oh, I'd like to, but won't you get into trouble singing in front of that apartment house? For the astronomical rents they pay in that joint, they deserve a little music. Come on, Mickey, you know plenty of wrong notes. Let's sing. All right. All right. Who's breaking 
it up, Nora. The man on the seersucker who just ran out of the building. Come on, go on, go on. Oh, I'll really? call the cops. It's trouble with you, buddy. You ain't got no joy in your heart. But I got two musical ears on my head. Go on, skedaddle. Go oh, on. Oh, Nick, there's a man who would put the hearts in heaven out of tune. I think I know that guy. Well, if you do, you shouldn't. He looks so grouchy, I bet he bites himself for breakfast every morning just to make sure he feels sore. Well, well, what are you waiting for? Contribution? Oh. Aren't you Scoot Skillet, the fight manager? Yeah, what if I get... Nick! Nick Charles! <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Where'd she get her? Oh, I, I figured I needed a manager, so I let her sign me up for life. Glad to know you, Mrs. Charles. <laughs> hey, say, Nick, uh... You want to get a piece of something good? I'll sell you half of Adam Bomb Brickenhead for only two grand. Well, who's Adam Bomb Brickenhead? My sensational new fighter who's meeting the champ tomorrow night. Oh. Which half of this prize fight are you selling? <laughs> She's the educated type who don't know nothing about nothing, huh, Nick? <laughs> I mean a half interest. Why should you want to sell before the big fight, Scoots? I need money bad. What do you say, Nick? No dice. What's wrong with Brickenhead? Get yeah, this... How'd you guess? Because you wouldn't sell a half interest in the right time if you could make a buck at it. Well, then maybe you can help me. Listen, the atom bomber just ain't himself. Nobody can find out what's eating him. Being as you're a detective, maybe you can find out, Nick. Where is Mr. Adam Bomb? Upstairs. Well, just what's wrong with him? Even the doctors can't find out. They says it's all in his mind. So I calls in a mind specialist. A head doctor. And you know what he tells me? What? That the atom bomber ain't got no mind. And this information cost me 25 bucks an hour. Well, of course we'll help you, Mr. Scoot. Come, Nikki, let's meet this mindless wonder. Hello, Scoot. Hello, sunshine. Bomber, I want you to meet Nick and Nora Charles. Oh, cheers. Hello, Mr. Adam Bomber. What's this cheers business? I heard it in a movie. It seems so debonair. Oh, I'm so unhappy. Bomber, uh, suppose you tell us what's bothering you. Nothing. Except I'm miserable. But why are you miserable? Because I'm unhappy. But why are you unhappy? Because I'm miserable. See, it's... It's a vicious cycle. Oh, me. But, Bomber, there must be some reason why you're groaning like a sick cow. I wish I was a cow. Well, you've got the voice for it, but your figure's wrong. Yeah, yeah, there's a catch to everything, ain't there? Oh, just a second. Why do you wish you were a cow? Why not? I wish I was anything as long as I ain't me. But what's wrong with you? Nothing hurts me nowhere, Doc. Listen, no mind. These ain't doctors. They're detectives. I thought they might help you. Well, nobody can help me. Not even Betty Gritt. Detectives? Did you say detectives? Why, yes. Detectives. Look, Nick, he's coming to life. He don't look dead no more. He looks dumb, like he used to be. Scoots, uh, l leave me alone with these two people. I, I gotta talk to him alone. What's the matter? You don't trust me no more? Uh, no, but I, I, I'm, I'm temperamental. I'm trained to a fine part. Nervous and, and high strung, like an underbred thoroughbred. You are? I know I am because I read about me in tonight's sports page. Now, now, uh, leave me alone with him. Okay, Bomber. Nick, Nora, you're the only two peoples in the world who can help me. Can we? I didn't want to tell no one before because no one thinks I got any brains, which is true. You see, Nick, it's JoJo. I love JoJo. Well, what happened to JoJo? She's gone. She left me. Why? I don't know. I always treated her good. I, I never even kicked her. Not even once. How sweet of you. I never even kept her chained up. Hey, maybe I should have chained her up, huh, Nick? Well, there are two schools of thought about that, but it's good for some females. Yeah. Whenever she got hungry, I always threw her a bone. Well, how generous of you. What's that? What kind of a dame are you in love with? A high-class kind, of course. Who eats bones? Lulu don't eat bones. She eats caviar. Lulu? But we were talking about Jojo. How many people do you love, Mr. Atombomber? Just three. Me, Jojo, and Lulu. Uh, now, let's take them one at a time. Who's Jojo? Just the most beautiful mongrel dog I ever found in alley, that's all. And I love her. When did the dog disappear? On the night I fought with Lulu. Oh, Lulu's a prize fighter. No, but she should be with the right she's got. Lulu is a girl. Jojo is a dog and me. Me, I'm a 
rare phenomenon. You are? That's what the doctor said I was. Nick, Nora, promise me you won't tell nobody what's wrong with me. Not even Scoots. Why? Well, if everybody knew how I felt about JoJo, they'd think I was dumber than I really am. Can I help it if I love dogs? We'll keep your secret. And now, will, will you find JoJo for me? How can I win the world's championship tomorrow night knowing JoJo is walking the street with no one to scratch her fleas? Look at me. Take pity on me. I'm, I'm wallowing in woe. I'm crying. We'll find your doggy, Mr. Adam Bomber, before tomorrow night. Mrs. Childs, you're a dear, sweet poison. Almost as sweet as... as JoJo. <laughs> Nicky, darling, what makes you think we can find a dog in a nightclub like this? I mean, a dog who not only bites, but barks. Beautiful. Have you ever heard of Banana Nose Norbert? Is it an ice cream sundae or a relation of Jimmy Durante? <laughs> He's the guy who owns this dive, and he practically runs the underworld of this town. We became friends when I sent him up the river years ago. Nick, you promised me that we were going to live in the upper world from now on. I was afraid you'd object. That's why I brought you here before I told you the reason. Nora, baby, it isn't as if this was a detective case or something, but do you think that dog disappeared by accident? You mean the poor pooch is the victim of dog snatchers? Well, do you think smart gamblers would stop at stealing a dog if they knew the effect it would have on the atom bomber? Hello, Nicky. Waiter said you wanted to see me. <laughs> oh, banana nose. Uh, this is my wife, Nora. Well, well, well. Well, wonders never cease. You're the first guy who ever came into this joint with a beautiful tomato that he was actually married to. Why, thank you, <laughs> Mr. Banana Nose. <laughs> you don't mind that I called you tomato, Mrs. Charles? No, if you don't mind my calling you Banana Nose. Nah. Banana Nose and tomato. We ought to get together and open a vegetable store. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, listen, Banana Nose, I'm looking for the pup that was stolen from Adam Bomb Brickenhead. Oh, yeah? Why? We promised to return him. Without that dog, Mr. Adambaum is so depressed he'll hardly be able to fight tomorrow night. Oh, oh. So that's why the odds went down against him. You know, Nick, a few weeks ago, the experts figured him to beat the champ. He will beat the champ if he has his doggy. Ah. And if he does, someone named me can clean up a load of loots. Nick, your worries are over. They are? Just tell me what the pooch looks like, and by tomorrow morning, you will have that dog in your apartment for breakfast. <laughs> You are listening to the new adventures of The Thin Man, presented for your summertime entertainment by the makers of that international favorite, Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. Just before our program started tonight, you heard on your radio those NBC chimes. You know, that bing, bong, bell. Now, you've probably heard that NBC musical signal 150 times or more. And every time you've heard it, bing, bong, bell, it made exactly the same sound. Well... I can't think of a better way to illustrate the uniformity of Pabst Blue Ribbon. If you enjoy a good glass of beer, you've probably ordered Pabst Blue Ribbon 150 times or more. And I'm sure you noticed every glassful was exactly alike. Not too heavy, not too light, but fresh, clean, sparkling. With the real beer flavor coming through just the way you like it. Now, how does Pabst keep it that way year after year? <laughs> well, I can sing the answer to that one, too. Thirty-three fine brews blended into one great beer. Yes, that Pabst blending process is costly, and it takes infinite patience, but the result? Well, I'll leave it to your sense of taste. Why not order a few cans or bottles and learn why millions the world over have settled down to blended, splendid Pabst Blue Ribbon? Relax, and let's catch act two of tonight's Thin Man Adventure. Nick and Nora Charles have promised to find Jojo, the mongrel pooch whose mysterious disappearance has broken the heart of Adam Bomber Brickenhead, the heavyweight challenger who lacks a mind. It's now 11.30 in the morning, and we find our hero and heroine at breakfast. Nicky... You know what I dreamed about last night? Huh. Dogs? Yes. How'd you find out? 
I dreamed about him, too. Well, darling, tonight Mr. Adambaum goes into the ring to battle for the championship. And he's still dogless. Well, don't worry, dear. Banana Nose Norbert won't fail us. He said he'd have the dog here for breakfast. We're having breakfast. And no dog. Oh, now, Nora, you mustn't take it so to heart. Oh, why not? Poor Mr. Adam Bomber. Without a mind, without a dog, and with a broken heart. What's he got? Cauliflower ears, 200 pounds of solid muscle, and uh, an appealing personality. I think Lulu's behind the whole thing. The Adam Bomber's girlfriend? Mm-hmm. But they're in love with each other. Why should she pull a mean trick like uh, dog napping? Well, I'm in love with you, and I do mean things to you. Yeah, that's true. Why do you do them? Because I love you, Madge. <laughs> Besides, they had a fight. Wait, wait a minute. Listen. It's a dog. Unless I'm hearing things, too. There are two dogs. One's a coloratura soprano, and the other is a basso profundo. Listen, Nick. It's a full operatic ensemble. Nora, th- this can't be. This thing has affected our minds. We've gone cooch potty. Oh, look, one of the dogs is ringing our bell. Just a minute. Hiya, Nick. Banana nose. I told you I'd have a dog for you. Got my voice around the ball like it's fine. Hey, you dog, shut up. Hey, Spike, make them dogs obey me. Don't they know who I am? Come in, banana. Let the dogs rest in the hall. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Charles. The banana nose never fails. I got the pooch. I think. So I heard. What made you do this? Oh, I ain't no dope. With these low odds on the atom bomber, there's going to be plenty in it for old Banana Nose when we find the doggy and the atom bomber wins the fight. Yeah, I see your angle. But Banana Nose, I thought you'd figured some gambler took the pooch. I checked on that angle. The hound was not hijacked. So I figured he was on the loose since the dog society didn't pick him up. It isn't a him dog. It's a her. A tomato? Mm-hmm. Jojo is a female. <laughs> well, I'll be doggone. <laughs> I forget there was two kinds. I told them to pick up all the black and white mongrels they could find, no matter what kind of personalities they had. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll bring the dogs in, and I'll have the atom bomber come down and see if he can identify one of them. Are you going to bring that mob of mongrels in here, Nicky? Well, what can we do, Nora? We've got to be good hosts. Well, you can stay here with them, Nick. I know what I'm going to do. Where are you going, Nora? To investigate my own angle on this dog napping. I'll call you up, darling. I'll sneak out the back way. Goodbye. Uh, Nora! Well, Nick, shall I bring him in? Well, I guess so. (laughs) Okay, you mugs. Send in all the girl dogs. Good evening. Good evening. Are you Miss Lulu Laverne? I am she. Well, I'm Mrs. Nora Charles. Pleased to meet you, I think. Uh, entree. French. That means come in and also something expensive to eat in high-class continental dumps. It does? Yeah. Are you interested in culture? Well, I suppose so. Culture's my latest passion. Well, I thought Mr. Adam Baum Brickenhead was that. Oh. What do you know about it? He told me about you, Lulu. He did, did he? Mm -hmm. Well, whatever he said, it's a foul and delicious canary. You mean malicious canard? Oh, trying to outculture me, are you? No, Lulu, I'm just trying to find Mr. Adam Bomber's dog. Well, what did you come here for? Do I look like a dog cat? Don't answer that. Lulu, all day long, poor Mr. Adam Bomber's been trying to identify his dog. Hundreds of dogs have been brought to my house. So far, his hasn't turned up. Not even one of them poaches is Jojo? Not one. If he goes into the fight without Jojo, he'll just be killed. That's great. I know you took the dog. Oh, so I'm a dog thief now. The doorman of this apartment house saw you with the dog. And after the tip I gave him for Christmas. But he didn't see me with Jojo. He saw me with my own dog, Chi-Chi. He saw you with two dogs. That must have been the night he seen me with the Atom Bomber. The Atom Bomber isn't two dogs. He is so. You don't know him as good as I do. Lulu, you just say those things because you had a fight with him. Sure, can you give me a better reason? And on the day you had a fight, you took the dog out for a walk and you told him she ran away. She did. Why? Because we girls just didn't get along together. And besides, no man should love another female as much as he loved that dog, even if she has got a better pedigree than I got. Lulu, you're jealous of Jojo. Me? Jealous of a pooch? What's she got? Dog skin. I got mink. 
Lulu, you know where that dog is, and I'm going to see that you return her. <laughs> you can't scare me. Hey, who are you calling? My husband. He'll make you confess. That's unfair. You can't turn a man loose on me. You can see I'm the type that men can melt. Nick. Good heavens, who answered the phone? Nick! Hello, Nora, baby. I thought the dogs answered the phone for a moment. Well, they've done everything but that. Banana Nose and his boys keep bringing them in by the dozens. Hey, hey, get down. Have you found Jojo among them? Uh, no. Uh, the Adam Bomber's here. He's dazed from the dogs and scared to go into the ring. Yeah, hey, don't fight! Nick, come up here to Lulu's place right away. I'm sure she's got the dogs. Okay, Lulu's place. Uh, wait a minute. The Adam Bomber's got to rush to the fight now. Hey, hey, Bomber, you want to say something to your girl, Lulu? Yeah. Uh, hello, Lulu. Uh, I love you, Lulu. Uh, well, I'm glad to hear it, Mr. Bomber. But this is Nora. Lulu, come here and say something nice to him. He's got to rush to the fight now. Encourage him. I sure will. Hello. Bomber? Lulu, I'm so miserable. No. And my best wish is that the champ should mighty in the first round. Lulu, what a wish. What are you complaining about? If you croak in round one, you won't have to finish the fight. Goodbye. Well, folks, we're at the end of round two of this television broadcast of the World Championship Fight. And the Atom Bomber has covered the champ with blood. <laughs> That is the Atom Bomber's blood. Lulu, Nora and I have brought you to this beer parlor to see what you've done to the poor Atom Bomber. Yes, Lulu, look at him. He looks terrible. Ah, that's the television set. It ain't perfected yet. Folks, as you look at the face of the Atom Bomber, don't think your television set is broken. It's just what the champ did to him. Oh, boy, he's really a mess, eh? There's the bell, folks, and we're off for another round of slaughter. Here comes the Atom Bomber. He dived right into the champ's right. Oh, stop him back, Bomber! Bomber's tired of the champ, right? So he's aiming his head at the champ's left. <laughs> Bullseye. Oh, the poor bomber. Nick, she's breaking down. I can't bear to see his ugly face falling like that. All right, I'll give you the poop. She's in a dog hotel on a honeymoon with my dog. Come on, I'll show you where. Here's Jojo. Thanks, Doc. Nick and Nora... Can we still get to the fight on time? Yes, Lulu. Scoots has some ringside seats for us, right near the Atom Bomber's corner. So this is Jojo. <laughs> How do you like being a bride, Jojo? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you three gushing girls. We've got to rush. We got here in time. Look, the bomber is still alive. Yes, he's resting between the rounds. Nora? Yes, dear? You sit here with Lulu. I'm going to take Jojo to the bomber's corner. All right. Hey, Scooch! Bomber! Look what I got here! Hey, Scooch! Nick, Nick, don't bother me. We're trying to keep him conscious. I've got something that'll make him win the fight. Look, Nick, I ain't got time. This boy of mine needs everything but a blood transfusion. Scooch, I'll buy that half interest in your boy for two grand. Sold. I'll sell you the half above the waist. That's completely dead wood. It's a deal. Now let me talk to my half of my boy. Okay, okay, here. Bomber. Bomber, look what I've got under my arm. <laughs> Jojo. My little doggy, Jojo. Yes, your girl Lulu had her. She took her because she thought you loved her more than you loved her. That ain't true. I love my dog just as much as I love my girl. And Lulu loves you, too. And there she is. She came here to watch you win the championship. Lulu. Oh, boy, I'm going to kill that champ. I'm going to murder him. My fighting spirit is returned. Nothing can stop me now. Okay, I'm going back to our seats. Go in there and win, Bomber. Nick, Nick. I'm coming, baby. Did you tell the Bomber what happened? Yes, Nora. Did it do any good? Good. You just watch, Lulu. As soon as he saw you and the dog, he was practically resurrected. Resurrected? Is that good? It's going to be sensational. There's the bell. Look at him go. Knock him in the head, Bomber. Give him the old one, too. Oh, boy, there goes the Bomber. Look at him swing. Yes. Look at him miss. Look at him receive that wall up from the gym. Look how nicely he falls. Get up, Bomber. That's right, Bomber. Stay there and take a nice oh. rest. Uh. Take a rest, Bomber. Hey. He isn't resting, Nora. He's unconscious. Hey, don't be silly. He's being small. Hey. Get up, Bomber. Jojo, bark at him. He's firing. <laughs> Nora, he was knocked out. But, but that's impossible. 
We did everything like they do in the movies, and it never ends this way. It's, it's a foul. the bomber is down for the count. Now, if Nikki and Nora are smart, they'll go on home and have themselves a cold, refreshing bottle of that blended, splendid Pabst Blue Ribbon. The beer with a fresh, clean, sparkling flavor. You know, Pabst Blue Ribbon is quite a home favorite with happily married couples. Just to mention a few, there's Mr. and Mrs. Gregory Peck, Mr. and Mrs. Bob Hope, Mr. and Mrs. Lawrence Melchior, and Miss Gladys Swarthout, and her husband, Mr. Frank Chapman. Now, these people can certainly afford the best of everything. And the fact that Pabst Blue Ribbon is served in their homes is a tribute to its quality. I could tell you about Pabst's 104 years of leadership in the art of brewing and explain how Pabst developed the science of blending. Yes, blending 33 fine brews to keep the same identical Blue Ribbon flavor and quality in bottle after bottle, year after year. But... I'd rather you'd simply taste it yourself. By tasting, by comparing, you'll understand why millions the world over have settled down to blended, splendid Paps Blue Ribbon. And now for the conclusion of tonight's Thin Man Adventure. Hello, Nicky, darling. Where have you been? To see Scoots and pay him for my half of the bomber. Oh. How is he? Very happy. He wishes there were more people like me in the world and uh, less fighters like the bomber. That's not nice. <laughs> the bomber really tried hard. Yes, I know. The bomber says he would have won the fight if the champ didn't get in his way so much. I know. But, it, but is it Mr. Bomber's fault if there was another man in the ring? <laughs> anyway, I'm glad to hear he's going to marry Lulu. When did you find that out? Oh, well, Lulu phoned a few minutes ago. Well, that's one match I hope he'll win. Nora. Hmm? Nora, darling, what are you knitting there? Uh, can't you guess? Why, it, 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 it looks like a, a little garment. Nora, don't tell me. Yes. Jojo's going to have puppies. Well, then congratulate me. Why? <laughs> After what I went through with that dog, I practically feel like a father. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like another hot night tonight. Mm. And if we can't sleep, I know just what to do now. Hmm? Go out again? No. <laughs> we'll get into too much trouble that way. We'll each have a glass of ice-cold Pabst Blue Ribbon beer, and then I'll... Do this. And say good night, Nikki, darling. Be sure to listen next Tuesday night when Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer brings you another happy, exciting Thin Man adventure with Les Tremaine and Claudia Morgan. Next week, the adventure of the haunted hams. When Nick and Nora go to the country and discover that livestock aren't the only stock in barns during the summer. The Adventures of the Thin Man is brought to you by the Pabst Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Newark, New Jersey, and Peoria, Illinois. And this is Ed Hurley saying good night with the best wishes of Pabst Blue Ribbon dealers from coast to coast. <laughs> Friends, now that summertime is really here to stay for a while, you'll be planning more and more hot weather meals. You know, an appetizing platter of cold cut, sliced ham, turkey, corned beef, potato salad, and, of course, plenty of Pabst Blue Ribbon, nicely chilled in cans or bottles. Better order a good supply today, just so you'll have it in your refrigerator when you get that thirsty feeling. Be sure it's Pabst Blue Ribbon, blended, splendid, Pabst Blue Ribbon. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.